All right, we are now live. What's up? What's going on? So, I want to thank everybody for joining the show. Uh, yeah, but episode twenty-five, yo, we're almost pretty crazy through the year, yo. Mm. Pretty crazy. I think episode two with ass. This is pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. So, uh, but today we're going to be talking about how to keep your dent repairs clean. Uh, yeah, so, man. first thing, like we always do, Ryan, you want to introduce yourself, Dave? Same thing. Ryan, RPS Dent Repair out of Baltimore. What's going on, guys? David with Windy City Dent Repair out of Chicago. And Chris, Dillis Touch, Washington, D.C. area. Uh, so, I, we're going to start off like we always do with some tools. What's up, guys? I see you guys in the chat. Um, we're going to start off with some tools. Uh, Ryan, you want to go first? You want me to go first? Uh, you can go first. All right. Hopefully, you guys can see this. Actually, hold on one second, Ryan. Go ahead and go, ahead and go first, Ryan. Here we go. Okay. So, yeah. I did end up getting a new tool. Um, oh, man. This just all tangled up now. So, I'll start off with this. This thing is freaking awesome. Um, we uh, had Chad Peterson on the show a couple weeks ago from Endeavor Tools. And I was talking to him on the phone, you know, not long ago. And we were talking about door hangers and hatch hangers and what, you know, what I really didn't like in the hatch hangers that were out there. And he kind of sent me a little sneak photo of some stuff he's been working on. So um, he ended up sending me one to try out. And this thing. This is the best damn hatch hanger I've Look ever had. Thing. Jeez. This thing oh, is wow. awesome. It extends. <laughs> Let me taking it apart, showing his goods. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it's got two S hooks on there. Okay. A mm -hmm. billet, a billet end. Um, yeah, like I said, it telescopes. You know what I really enjoy about this thing is, you know, you get in the hatch, and you get the hatch hanger, and you're like trying to get this this corner. And you can just, it's always hitting the, the hanger. You know, you're always having troubles. This thing, I did a uh, Cherokee lift, a Cherokee back of the roof. Went overextended it. And these were kind of leaning in. Mm -hmm. Man, it, it, this thing's awesome. This thing, if you don't have one, go buy one of these. Because this is by far the best one on the market. Um, I think he's making two, some with billet and some with plastic. This is like a dur like a Durlene or... One of the classic. Yes. Something. All these I do so the back of a roof. The very back. And you're hanging this on the back of the car. Yes. On the roof. And then you're using a rod. Okay. For leverage. This or looks so much bigger than or there. you go in the second or third brace in. But then you're pulling that well, yeah, but yeah. And you're using it as leverage in the front. I do a okay. ton of roofs. I've had a ton of hail cars this year. Yeah. This I used it last week, man. I mean, I put it on Facebook on Dentex only. This yeah. thing is awesome. I mean, it adjusts up and down. I think we went over this whole working mechanism that he has here. Yeah, it's stout too. <laughs> this tool is this thing is badass. I mean, there's no no doubt about it. So if you don't have one of these, it's worth it. I have the the carbon tech. Uh, hatch jammer, or yeah, hatch leverage bar. This yeah, thing, this is yeah. this thing is unbelievable. This thing is badass. This this thing is worth every bit of anything, it, whatever it costs. I mean, this thing's awesome. The the uh, so how far does it extend? Do you think is it six um, feet or no? I mean, it's so your span is like what five feet? -ish? Yeah, I got these little little kid arms so. I mean, let me see here. It's, arms. <laughs> it's probably three and a half foot, four foot. I mean, it's, okay. Okay. It's pretty big. I mean, it's it's a yeah. pretty big. I mean, it, it just the build quality is awesome. It really is an awesome. I love that it's you know it collapses. It's, it, it just it feels it's, like it's some type of resistance as you're closing it. Like yeah. Kind of. I mean, it, it takes are pretty nice. It takes a little bit of pressure to get it out. It really does. It's it's rubber coated. Mm -hmm. it, it's a really good tool. You guys really, if you do a lot of roofs or a lot of hail, this thing's a beast. Yeah. Man. Ever it's a tool. Beast. Huh? 
Endeavor Tools. Nice. <laughs> I think he was talking about it on the show last time. So he was. He was coming out with it. Yeah. I remember him coming That's out with it. Up. And we had yeah. before that, before we were even talking about it coming out. And you know, I I use the carbon tech rod. I'm a big. I love the carbon tech rod. It's, yeah. It was a great purchase. The problem I have with the carbon tech rod is the leverage bar is only about this big. Actually, I've got one up here on the shelf, but it's only about this big. It's got ropes and ratchet ropes, and it kept coming untied and. Todd ended up replacing one for me, and I just th – that thing is – fits my needs. You know what I mean? I do a lot of transit roofs. Yeah. It fits my needs. So the other thing that I got – here's another Endeavor Tools. This shorty little three-foot rod. Huh. And this is, that, <laughs> this is that crazy tip design that he came out mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. to where it's literally going back and going forward. I just kind of put some BS tips in here to – to get it out to show you guys but this thing is awesome for the backs of roofs i used it with that thing like the the cherokee the last rib back mm -hmm. smoking it with this thing i mean just you know it's just i used it on a fender today dude this thing is awesome for a little a little fender. tiny little tight had no headlight in it okay so i could go right in mm -hmm. It yeah. You know, it's got the round. And see, that will make that. That will give you a lot of uh, support because of the square power. and power. You know, that's so, what it was. Yeah, it didn't wow. slide on that piece of metal like a, like a round tool slides. I mean, it just stayed mm -hmm. straight. So Endeavor Tools, guys, it's no joke. Chad did mm -hmm. a great job with this stuff. I mean, I actually called him after I used that hatch hatch bar and told him i said i i've got to tell you something that that that's a game changer man that's yeah. a game changer so, and you do a roof every day so i do do a lot <laughs> i do but this little this, on the ladder this little <laughs> angle thing like when you're on the back of a roof trying to get back by that brace and usually mm -hmm. you have to paddle to it i was pushing a lot of them with this so I, I, could I you tell it. the angle as you yeah. were pushing? Okay. No, no. It was bringing it up clean. I mean, it was a... It wasn't really annoying to you? No, right? you know, you get the bar or... and, like, you can just barely get to that tool, get to that... I mean, obviously, you uh -huh. can't get it all the way at the very back of the roof. Yeah, and then sometimes you have to go around the car and work yes. from the other angle because it's yeah. the only way to get a tool into there, yes. <laughs> you figure, I mean, that much farther back. So, say this is yeah. a brace. If yeah. you were coming straight up, you were here, you're getting that farther yep. back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. So, this little slide carbon handle. Endeavor tools killing it. Though. Yeah, I mean it, the quality's yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys. I know there was someone talking about the price, but just these little. This is billet aluminum. It isn't like yeah, it's, that stuff ain't cheap. You know. <clears throat> um. So you can go at it, Chris. I did my little spiel with, but that hatch bar, man. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. I think I'm. I think I'm buying one for Kane this week. I was like, I, I'm gonna buy another one because when they sell out, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> so, if it's anything like that, uh, that uh, the smaller one that he made, just the the ratcheting system, I yeah. thought was was way better than what I have. And you see what I have—that old school yeah. good crap or, or whatever it was. Uh, so. And I, I didn't think like, I, man, I, wish I, did. <laughs> I didn't think thing. I was gonna like the little one, um, but I have the Carbon Tech one that has that bar that runs across the top, so you can set it up in there with one hand. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But the the one that he has with him having those hard two pieces that go up inside you can the still door. Do it with one hand. Exactly. Exactly. So. Chad's not even yeah. Chad's not even on here, and I'm giving him. Oh yeah, he is on there. How about that? <laughs> nice. Talking about yeah, the ads, Jim. <laughs> so, but it's good stuff, man. Check it out, EndeavorTools.com. Nice. It's worth it. Totally worth it. It's awesome. Go for it. Chris. I think I think Chad sent me something, but I haven't got a chance to get up to the shop yet. I've been freaking so busy in my other location, so. I want to see what's going on with that. But I have a blending hammer I've been using recently. <clears throat> uh, and when I don't use my little custom 200-gram uh, blending hammer, I use this titanium one. I don't remember where I got it from, but if you just Google titanium uh, blending hammers. I think they have one at Dencraft. 
Dencraft has it? Because okay. it comes in a box. Like yes, a wooden yes, box. It comes yeah. in a wooden box. The only thing I would change is this is a little too narrow for me. It's really it's thin. thin. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what I like to do is kind of knock down with the backside. So if you can kind of reinforce this area, I think it's a perfect blending hammer. It's really light. It obviously is titanium. Couldn't you put um, your little wrap on there, Chris? Your little rubberized? Just, yeah, but it just doesn't have the weight. So I think I've seen um, people use like a string to wrap it up uh -huh, and then uh -huh. use the rubberized thing. And you probably perfect. Trying yeah. to build the girth. The girth. The girth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's thin, man, you know? It is. It is. You know? It doesn't, doesn't work well. So, um, but it doesn't uh, nick as easy as a, a lot of these blended hammers. Uh, I do have a dent craft tip and great tip, great shape to the tip, but it nicks every time I drop it. So I don't even use it, but this one is not too bad. It's dull now. I haven't polished it, but it doesn't have any blemishes, any nicks on it. So what are you polishing it with? Uh, just my buffer. I have a, okay. I have a, um, sometimes I'll use the, uh, toll cut red and I'll just kind of lightly, yeah. Uh, graze over it and then I use a uh, compound and then I just compound it. I don't even do like the whole stages. I just use it. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. But normally it picks up these little nicks from like the dirt and the paint or dropping it. But really it's like the dirt and the paint or, or something else, something foreign. And uh, you pretty much, it's pretty much useless, I think, afterwards. So it keeps its uh, shape. And so I really, really do like it for fine tuning and finishing uh, repairs. Uh, and also, I use, go back on this, I like this kind of pointed tip. So I kind of just hit it from the backside uh, and kind of obviously use it, you know, further away and kind of use my uh, wooden hammer, my little paddle, to knock down this, uh, the head of it. So is I, I kind of reverse it. Is there a reason you like the pointed tip? <laughs> Sometimes when you're trying to fine tune, kind of get some of the, the sharper highs out, um, but the, uh, yeah, so the, the pointed tip. I wish it was a little bit uh, kind of sharper. It's a little too blunt, either that or a little rounder. So hopefully I'm actually setting up my bench so I can start making these hammers. So uh, I'll probably cuss, uh, kind of redo this. I don't know how titanium is going to work. <laughs> so what's your what's your feeling on that compared to the one that Brian made you? Your other uh, Yeah, my night uh yeah, so the weight. I like the weight, but I was working on a um Porsche um Cayman uh today and uh it was just too much weight. It was a uh, deer hit it and it kind of created this wave at the top of the door, which is a pain in the butt to get to anyways. I had a glue pull blend you know, kind of but anyway, this was the blending hammer for me. It's 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 a little longer than what uh what Brian made for me. Um, and it's just the weight. It's not as heavy as okay. the one. So I was literally with Brian's hammer, I was just only coming up maybe an inch, and it was just mm. too much. So I needed to kind of get that rhythm going. And so I needed to come, come up a little bit and let it just fall. I don't really kind of push it down. I kind of let it fall and just yeah. guide it. So <clears throat> it's just, I don't know. That seems to me, uh, a lot of people talk about when they talk to, about blending is uh, – the vibration so you can't create a vibration if the hammer is like too heavy uh and sometimes too light so yeah you need to get that bounce that rhythm that vibration and uh so this one was making it was working today on porsche steel so that was pretty stout um and then the other little thing i used today which i think everybody should have if you don't have is the uh the edgy uh, tools hanger, um, hooker hanger, or whatever they call it. Awesome. So, <clears throat> if 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 uh, you guys remember back in the day, you run to Home Depot, you get the rings, you get a couple <laughs> of hooks, <laughs> and, yep. and you use somebody's vice to squeeze them together. I mean, you know, yes. used to do that every six to seven months because you would lose them, leave them in, <laughs> you know, back in the car and all that good stuff. But I mean, I like the fact that he made it green. I, I don't know, you know, I'm pretty sure it matches his uh, his colors, but it's a nice bright color. I don't leave this. This is probably my first one I bought, and I still have it. Yep. And he makes a bigger one, 
uh, for some of the bigger tools. But yeah, I think Ryan said he only buys the bigger ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which which makes more sense. I wouldn't get the small one. I would definitely get the bigger. That was one, like but... his first version, I think, when he first yeah. came out with it. They're all. I mean, I'll tell you, if you don't have it, you're missing. Yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah. I have broke one of them. I broke the hook off of one of them, and it was oh. maybe a year old. I sent him a message and a picture, and there was one in the mail the next day. So it's something yeah. super hard steel. Dave's awesome to deal with. Yeah, so, it's got some weight to it too. And the, this 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 ring right here, uh, if you do have another ring and you kind of need a little yeah, bit yep, more yeah, length, you can hook another one to them and kind of yeah. double hook them. So. Don't, don't mind guys. these. Both of these guys are sick today. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry, guys. Yeah, don't sick. mind them. I'll try to mute as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, that is the tools uh, that I have: blending hammer and the edgy hook. So definitely uh, try to get these. If you don't, this is definitely all right. So the topic of the day. Um, Keeping your dent repairs clean. So, um, I have a I have a decent amount of experience of training guys to clean up their dents, just because of the amount of guys that I've trained. Uh, not saying that these guys don't know, but um, it is a very hard thing to do. I would say uh, it, you have to have the eye for it, and sometimes you can train for it, and sometimes you know. I've, I've met guys that just cannot glass things mm -hmm. and they just, you know, it, it is what it is. So, um, I was working with a, with a tech, really nice guy, 16, 17 year tech. And, um, I look back at a hell car. I had him working. He's fast. And I said, Oh, I said, check, check this way. And he's, ah, oh, man, you know, that, that second check. And it's like, <laughs> he's another three or four hours on the deck, man, just cross checking and stuff. So anyway, it's very, very uh, uh, what's my word I'm looking for, Dave? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's important. I mean, it's yeah, just, it's, it's important, but it's it's a complicated thing. Um, I think not every tech gets it, but a lot of techs do. So, um, I think with the right mentorship and and, and, and uh, I haven't met a guy that can get it. That, that hasn't been able to see the little flickers and stuff. So let's go over some tips, I guess. Ryan, what do you want to start with? Take your time. Time is a big thing. You know yes. what I mean? My other thing with doing a clean dent, connect mm -hmm. all your connect your pushes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I agree. So if you're not connecting your pushes, you're making those little lows. I, I call it railroading to where you get all these, say it's a crease. You get all these little, you know, you're looking at it horizontally and you're looking down on it and you're like, okay, it's coming out nice. And you look at it from the side and it is a disaster. Yeah. It is a disaster. So time, take your time, connect all your pushes. So we even about time. Let's, let's elaborate a little bit, like two or three minutes on, on time. When I tell guys now, what are you looking for when they slow down? What are they, what are you looking for? to achieve when you tell them to slow down and take your time. Like I tell the tech that I'm training now, I'd rather you push it 8,000 times than push it 12 times. Take your time, more accurate pushes, because when you make that wrong push, you're cleaning that up. The more clean up, the less clean the repair. So definitely time. You know, Just take your time and no reason to try to blow through it. Right. So when you when you when you run across a complicated dent that you know I think some of the larger dents you're just gonna have to clean up mm -hmm. you're gonna have a lot more cleanup time so you approach it in a way that um, that minimizes that cleanup time because mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like you know that's a hundred percent you know what I do but the more you basically are playing with that metal yes the the the, the, the more chances you have of having a flicker there. That you got to sit there and try to, you know, work out. So well, when I tell my guys to take your time, that's what I want them to see. I want them to the, maybe even glue pull. I think glue pull pulls yeah. a lot of the dents up cleaner. So if that's a dent that you know will just move with glue and it won't cause yeah. any more damage, even though it takes another 15 minutes to pull that glue out, man, pull that glue out because 
it's going to take you another hour to clean up that area that you push with a tool. And, and my thought to that is, I try to explain to, to Shane today, you have a dent that's this big. You get in there with a tool, and you're making pushes all around in there. Okay, you got pushes in there. You start bringing the dent out. Those pushes are still there in that center, the original pushes you made. Yeah. So if you take a tab and you glue a tab in there, you're pulling that much surface area out. <clears throat> so, you know, so a lot yeah. of the bigger stuff I, are sharp stuff. Not really sharp, but bigger damage I'm glue pulling. You glue pulling first. Yeah. yeah. What about yeah, you, Dave? So, so today I had uh, – today's kind of a perfect example. I didn't have – uh, my trainee with me today, um, but I did have a dent on a four fusion quarter panel um, in front of the gas door. Oh the man! Line. But not not like so. You take the gas door and you go straight down, and it was just a little farther in front of that. Customer stated that uh, he called a couple other companies, and they all wanted to drill the door jam. <laughs> of course they did. So of course they did. I said, no, we will not drill, and we're going to do things properly, taking out the taillight, taking out the interior panel, or the interior trim. Um, and so this dent, it's actually on my Instagram story now, so if you guys go there, there actually isn't an after. I just left right after that to go to the next body shop. But um, So Windy City Dent Repair, just go on Instagram. It, it's, it's on my story right now. It's three to four little creases inside of one big dent. Um, so the, on a body line, so mm. there's a lot of moving parts to this little, you know, say four inch dent from the bottom body line to right above the, the lower body line. And now I have to figure out how to break this down and fix this cleanly by coming all the way across as well with tools. What color was it? Silver. Oh, come on. So, so I'm, I'm sitting I'm sure, okay, you know, time is of the essence, but it's got to be a clean repair. You know, I know he's had other paintless dent repair companies look at this, but mm -hmm. now you're kind of under, you know, you're, it, there's pressure. Yeah. You know, you gotta, you got to make it look right. It has to look right. <laughs> and they wanted to do, you know, the, the faster way and, you know, make it look right, but we're doing it the right way. I got to make it look right. Um, and, you know, and I'm confident in my ability, but I have to now take my time and break this down because there's multiple sharp creases in one big dent. Um, so, yeah, started with glue. Get that metal moving, you know, bring a lot of that out. And then now I have to come in with tool. But what I'm doing is I'm taping up my tips. Coming all the way across, still moving more metal than I would if I had a sharp tip. Um, and just slowly breaking down, taking off some strips of tape. Um, and then using sharper tip tools as I get a cleaner repair or try to get a cleaner repair, but close pushes on the body line, moving a lot of metal at first, then close, close pushes on the body line. Um, and then above and below, it was a two hour repair for a four inch dent, and it came mm. out flawless. Mm. But to do that, my trainee, it would take him two days, mm -hmm. you know, and he would need to take two days to make it that clean, you know. And, and so time is huge, especially when you're starting out time, just taking your time. Um, if you cannot see your tip when you're pushing, it's you're it's over. You have to see your tip. And this is exactly what I keep telling my guy. Um, seeing your tip and taking your time. So, what you said your tech would have took two two um two days, and you took two hours. I would have had to. It's so it's that complex. So, what do you think he would have? Why do you think he would have took two days? You think he'd have been questioning himself? The little itty bitty pushes. I think the, the itty bitty approach, push. I, yeah, I mean the approach and the tool selection. I think is what a lot of your time. So your, 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 uh, I guess your, uh, kind of your experience with, uh, your, um, what is it? I'm looking for your coordination, <laughs> I guess. Man, I'm so tired and sick. Uh, but it's basically your muscle memory for pushing. It's just, that's where your experience comes in. Yeah, you don't think I mean, he'll be able to take, chop that down into three hours? 
I mean, I'm just, that, I'm just, no, but that, that also takes time. Right, of course. You know, so. and, and until you glass it that first time, you know, it's until but, you glass it that first time, and then that's going to be your marker. And then every time you have a complex that after that, it should be a shorter time. Right. And like I said, I think it's a tool selection, how to approach it. Because if you approach that then it's wrong, you're done. Yes. You know, yeah. you're done. I mean, if I would have went in, if I would have went in strictly with sharp tools right off the bat, paint would have cracked, nothing would have moved, you know, um, it, it, I, I don't know. Glassing dense, I think it just, it takes messing up a lot before so, you know how to really glass it down. So we have, I'm just going over what we have. We have the time. So taking your time, excuse me. Tool and selection. wait. When you're taking your time, you're 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 thinking about a lot of things. You're thinking about your approach, yes. Uh, tool selection. We're looking at uh, maybe some leverage, yeah. uh, which obviously may change your your approach. Uh, what else are we looking at? Time, your approach, tool selection. When when, when you go yeah, to that complex debt, or even just a standard, I mean, I say that? assessing the damage before you start anything is what I tell. Right. What I say, I I look right. at that. You look at that yeah. debt. Before you start and you say, okay, you know, you move the board all around, kind of look at it for a couple minutes mm -hmm. and say, what tool am I going to use? How am I going to approach it? Because if you approach it wrong, you're, you, you're not going to have a glass. You're not going to have a clean repair. I, I, you know, yeah. And so I, and with this quarter panel, I couldn't get one tool all the way down to the, like the bottom arch, that arch of the wheel well. I couldn't get a tool all the way in there. Um, a sharp tip tool just stopped, you know, that quarter inch right above it. So mm -hmm. there's two little baby, three little baby creases right above that arch still. Um, a sharp tip tool is not going to get there. Uh, a whale tail didn't get there. A shave tool didn't get there. So what did I, I ended up having to glue pull that entire bottom, uh, you know, little portion. Um, so tool selection, it, you know, is huge. It, it takes a, I'm using, a, I use the hail bar. A long dent gear double bend and one shave tool to fix the entire thing and then glue for that bot lower body line. But that's so, I'm sorry, that's so many moving parts. <laughs> it, you know, there's so many, like, I, there's 15 tools on the lawn yes. next to me, you know, um, that I had to try. So, someone, you know, an experienced tech or, you know, someone who doesn't know is going to have 30 tools, you know, or should have, yeah. I think, 30 tools there trying to figure out what's going to get you the best possible, you know, result. So, so um, I know we're talking about tool selection, but if I remember correctly, um, some of the sow uh, suggestions were matching the damage. And that goes back to Ryan yeah. saying, you know, just kind of assess the damage. So I kind of like to figure out what impacted what it, what did it, how did it happen? And, and recreate uh, that. Right, and recreate that tool. So for, for guys that don't know, and it's, like I said, I don't, you know, I, this is what I gather from Sal's repairs or some of the bigger damages. He tries to match whatever hits. So that size of dent, he tries to match it. So if it's a, you know, kind of a four-inch dent, uh, maybe shopping cart hit it, he will put a tip and kind of match that and then push that kind of, I guess, all up at the same time. Um, I think that's some of his methods. Uh, Standliner tools, I believe, kind of just somewhat contours to what you need it to uh, to do. I don't know. It was weird. I, I I played with it even today, and it did the exact same thing. It kind of contoured to the actual dent, and when I pushed, of course, it was uh, the, the center of the dent uh, came up just like any other tool. But as I started to push further it started to kind of blend in with the with the dent, kind of flattened out and kind of give me a, a more uh, uniform uh, push. And again, I just had the Steinliner mini tool that he came out with, so the other one was different. So, um, but that's what uh, that's what some of my recommendations that I've heard on, online. Um, but going back to you know assessing the damage, um, we have someone that said mindset. So. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but I just watched my video of me doing the 
Sonata, Sonoma, whatever that that uh, car was with the whole quarter pound of smashed in. And I literally said, why did I sit there and do that repair? <laughs> so, I was just like, I must have been like, watch this. I'm going to get this bad boy out. So yeah. definitely mindset, uh, you know, plays plays a part into that's, some of these repairs. Um, that's how that's today. a very complicated repair. That's how it was today when the customer said that, you know, he did not want any holes drilled. Now, automatically, you have to step up to that challenge, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Knowing it's going to be a challenge. <laughs> knowing you can get it, but knowing it's going to be a lot more challenging than if it was a car maybe on a wholesale lot or something, you know, whatever the case is, yeah. and have an easier way of doing it. No, he wanted it done right. And so yeah. now you have to step up to the game. You know, it's right. up to the plate. <laughs> Well, I think the other thing in our, in our, you know, where we are with our repairs, we like that challenge. Yeah. Yeah. We get off on it. We enjoy that. (laughs) That's our, that's our drug addiction is the, is the tough damage that there's other companies that said no, or, you know, no, we're going to have to drill a hole. And you're like, oh, I'm going to fix this without drilling a hole. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Doing it the right way. You know, and someone says here, you know, how to find access finding access is huge you know yeah. um i tried to i kind of went for the gas door first because it was right in there um realizing that it was trying to get that gas door out was going to be take more time than knowing that i could just take the tail light out have access yeah and go through there so i think know. mobile mobile tech rx helps because you get that under view on a lot of the panels that they have listed you can say okay the front of that hood's honeycomb or, yeah. you know, whatever. It definitely helps. So if you guys have mobile tech RX, check out the comparative, the comparative pricing. pricing. And, it and is worth the extra. Yeah. The extra. And I think they're doing like R and I videos too. So really there's a, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard they were recording R and I videos. So door panels and stuff like that. So nice. nice. I know I was, I was, I was in a whole nother industry and it was actually lawn care you know dave i've been on this lawn care thing just trying to figure out different industries and anyway they don't they have like a two apps that are like halfway good and i'm like wow it's 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 very it's impressive yeah impressive that they have a you know app for dead guys that is very you know such you a know, small niche yeah it, it, to it's a nice app. A lot of lawn care. <laughs> lawn court. Yeah, lawn there's court. a lot it's more lawn care. I think in that group, there's like 20,000 members compared to you know, know, average team. dent, like 4,000 people. So they have a lot more uh, clientele base, and they don't even have a great app. So if you guys, I mean, these dent guys, you know, they, I guess, created this app. I don't know if they still push now or not, but. I think uh, John, but it, John still does. He still does? Okay. Yeah. But so, it's, hey, it's impressive. It get is that app, man. Get that app. Um, so, uh, so we got basically taking your time on the repairs. Is there any techniques that you you use, uh, Dave and Ryan, to get those clean repairs? I know we spoke a little bit about some. Um, any techniques that you use while you're repairing? I know we spoke a little bit about you know just starting it clean, trying to. Any yeah. other techniques that you could? You know, depending on temperature, where I'm at, um, you know, the severity of it, heat, you know, keeping heat on it if it is complex. Right now it's summer. Um, I'm not using heat too much unless I'm in a shop that is, you know, AC or something like that. But, um, you know, heat is huge. I think for at least uh, the winter months and, and that three quarters of a way, you know, almost 80, 90 percent. And that last little bit that's still there, that pit, and you hit that pit with a sharp tip tool that, you know, that paint can crack. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes yeah. it will. Sometimes it will. And you just spent three and a half hours trying to fix something. Um, so heat, you know, is still important. Uh, in the summer months, you know, I work outside a lot. A lot of those cars are hotter than if I had a heat gun on it. So, yeah. <laughs> he does work, yeah. So what are you doing with your light? What are you doing? How are you using your light? 360. So you're, yeah, you're actually I mean, using so your light 360 yeah. degrees. Yeah, I mean, so for this repair, I was I was pushing from the taillight. 
Um, you know, and that's the only way you can really push and then cross check it with it perpendicular. Uh, but every time I would knock down, I'm knocking down, I'm putting that board from the other side on the taillight side, and I'm looking at the taillight, knocking down that way, then coming back and pushing from the tail. So I know this happens on certain days, but I do, I do this a lot. So I naturally check the dent the way that my light is not uh, at. Yeah. So if I'm going parallel, then horizontal, I'm kind of panning my head kind of like this to see if there's any lines in the dent. Yeah. This is just coming off the shop or um, or something I can reference it off of. You know, I guess I guess I can do it about 90% of the time, uh, and I can just check it. If not, I'll put my light kind of full feet back, and I'll just pan my head and just check it. And if I see a line, I put my, my light goes back to the same. Normally, I don't move my light. But I see that line, I may kind of mark it a little bit, and then I go back and try to see it with my light that's current uh, currently set up, you know, yeah. the, the way that you it's harder to see. And then when you pinpoint that, you, you kind of get a gist of how that dent is moving. I think I'm training my eyes better for that repair, too. I don't and know I if see, you guys did that or not. I see you guys. I see you a lot, Chris. You use that symbol stand and far yes. away. When you get that board far, far away, that's when you can see your final imperfections. You know what I mean? I mean, yes. my guy today was like, man, yeah. I said, can you hold this board? Because I don't have the symbol stand. I mean, he's like <laughs> past the headlight on this car. And he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I just want to make sure it's perfect. Yeah. You know, so the, get your board away from you after you start getting to that yeah. final touch. When it's coming up, when it's coming up clean, yeah, you know, when it's yeah, coming up, yeah. sometimes you know you got to put that board close and then look oh, at yeah. you know pan your head through those three lights because that's giving you a different reflection. Yeah. Now, fade. now, do you guys flick like on oh, my James Lee like has cool and warm lights colors in it? Do you guys flick them around to see it in different color? I will see which color works best. Yes. You know, yeah. and then I'll uh, stick with that color throughout. And sometimes you know I'll, I'll flick yeah it change it. Bit. A lot of times I'm just flickering it to see what color is going to work best. Yeah. And I, I like the yellow. I, 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 I don't like using the white. The warm. It's it's the warm. Yeah. Yeah. See, for yeah, me, like it the, just depends on the color of the car. I, I'm, same thing. It, yeah. What, it depends on the color of the car. Whatever I can see best, then that's what, that, like, that's what I'm using. Yeah. A lot of I, times, I will also I'm, say oh, – I'm sorry, Dave. No, go ahead. I will also say that the brightness of the light does matter. Uh, yes. So – when I was working with Ryan, Ryan, I believe, has a DeWalt, and it's a 20-volt. And I think they just – he just changed the um, the actual mount because his is a lot brighter than mine. Uh, so if you guys are having a hard time seeing that dent, maybe a brighter light, you may want to get the DeWalt 20-volt, or, or you may want to go to the clear lens that Ryan, I believe, uh, mm -hmm. has and, too. And I, and I like that thing, like, right here. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, so and he gets it. I, I mean, he glasses it with it only being 16 inches from the dent. <laughs> so I can't figure it out, but I need to push that light back as far as I can. Uh, and I think we got a question was, uh, how do you get it uh, far enough uh, away? Um, and I use a simple stand on a on a um, a limited light. So it just has a connector for the Makita battery, and then you just attach the battery on the other side. It's like a symbol stand. So uh, the nice thing about that is it doesn't take much room out of the shop, so I can kind of put it in a place, and, and no one knocks it off. It's kind of a yeah. uh, um, small um, footprint. But uh, I was able to use it in the middle of a shop, and I kind of uh, – I had the light back. I was working on the rear door of a, of a Porsche, and um, – the light was probably another 10 feet, I would say, back. Yeah. It was past the – Depending light. on where I'm at, I'll either – if I'm at a dealer, sometimes I could stick it on another car next yeah. to me. Another car, yeah. I can do that. Or if I'm mobile, what I'll do is I'll just wrap it around the, the handle of my cart. Ah, uh, yeah. My cart to where oh, yeah. I need it. Um, yeah. So I'll do that sometimes. I don't have a symbol stand. I, you know, I think that yeah. is a great idea. I think the symbol stand is a great idea. You know, it's a super yeah. simple idea. Mm -hmm. um but you know i still haven't set that up here so i just i've been i wrap it around my cart and i'll move that cart wherever yeah. i need it to go 
Yeah, it's funny because uh, when I see, when I'm training technicians, they're literally are not moving their light. That's the biggest no. thing that I keep trying they're to tell. Because the they guys. want to finish it and clean it from that way. Yeah. And not understanding <clears throat> the movement of it. And th I think they're not understanding reflection, you know. And yeah. when you start to move that light, you look at it differently. And then I think that's where reflection comes in. Because that it's going to look different from every. <clears throat> Yeah. So that's like, oh, yeah. well, that light is reflecting a different, you know, differently. And I think, three six. I think, I think that's our experience where we're looking at the dent. Was there's no way I can finish this dent without moving my light. Yeah. And so halfway through the repair, we may move our light just because we know uh, that uh -huh. it needs to be worked in this direction. So sometimes you see the dent move. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I, like I tried to explain to to Shane today. I said. You, you think your dent's round or it's a crease. Mm -hmm. You push that round dent, it turns into, you know, a kidney bean. It turns into a star. It turns, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It, they move around sometimes in some weird positions. So you have and to And that's keep due to your pushing, you know. Exactly. That's due to pushing and keeping those pushes close <laughs> in a tight, you know, in a tight area. That's what's going to prov not prevent, but it hopefully not have that happen as often as you're exactly. moving it around. You can really control the way that dent is moving. Yep. If you understand where those pushes are, you actually see them exactly. pushing through that metal, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I, see, I see a couple guys in here asking questions about lines and fog. Lines and fog, it's really how you're trained. Um, I have a real hard time with lines. I'm always a fog guy. I'm an old dent wizard. I grew up on... We didn't have all these cool LED lights and all this stuff. <laughs> I literally used a little fog board, a piece of board that the light came through. And I remember my first light board from Dent was it had a tiny little fluorescent light inside and it plugged into the cigarette lighter. And it was a total piece of crap. And every, all every the time. <laughs> It had this weird lens on it oh, with a, like, like a piece of duct tape from the backside. So you guys got it made. You know, yeah. I always tell people all the time, I, I see body guys and they say, man, I, I got this board over here. I said, look, this thing is like HD television. When you start using that Eliminate board or the Stucky light, it's HD television. So, yeah, you know, the biggest thing with the lines and the fog, yeah. it's how you're yeah. trained. I mean, it, I, I really, I can't fix anything <laughs> with it. I tried that, uh, Kessler green hybrid board and I can't fix a damn thing. I'm actually stop. I'm getting away from that green. I use it. You see it in a lot of my videos, but it is very hard for me. Um, looks like straight lines had a suggestion yeah. uh, about natural light. And I am starting to push dents, finish dents without any light now. Yes. Uh, yeah. I've been, I've been playing around with that That's for the tough. past six months. Yeah. Yeah. And it all started when I had to do a repair, really small dent, but I, I had a dead battery. I had It was just the wrong angle for me to use a board, and I was like, this is <laughs> trash. I was like, so I used like the pole on the side of the, the, side of the uh, building, and dude, that drink came out clean, and I was it was it was epic. So that was about eight months ago, and I started uh, repairing dents. Once it gets to that point where I got to move my light back so far, I can get it without any light. Yeah, it's, See, it's, I can't, I can't, I can't compare it with the light, but I do like the natural light outside. You know, you'll take that board yeah. off, move your head around. And if those waves are there, then that means you still have to go back yeah. in, you know, mm -hmm. or do some blending, you know, knocking down or whatever needs to happen. But if you're seeing that, you know, the imperfection in the natural, it's going to be there when you put the light back on it. You're just not seeing yeah. it, you know, so you got to find it. So they're, they're also asking, uh, do you guys prefer tape or using plastic tips? It really depends on each application. You know, I think all three of yeah. us use. It's a different, yeah, it's a different, uh, yeah. I don't think plastic, I'd rather wrap it. Um, I've had too many instances where I've tried a plastic tip and let that thing slide. I feel like they're slippery. I mean, they're, they're, they slip more for some reason. Now, um, I use it. Do you? You don't use. You use a lot of chair tips, Dave. I'm a big R4 guy with the cherry tips. Yeah, I, yeah I'll, I'll do. Well, if I'm if I'm using, yeah, I'm a chair and then R4. Okay. I won't go in if it's something big. I mean, I'm not using just R4. I'm using chair. 
a lot of my stuff starts with chair, a big chair tip. Now it looks like Dane Paul is asking, what kind of tap towns do you use on on a rail on a half dollar size dents? I use mostly blended hammers. It depends. Rails uh, is blending hammers. I don't really use. Them. You know what I, I've been using a lot is your your cheap little free. <laughs> I use the crap yes. out of that thing. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you guys, go on his PDR Pry website and order it. You're next week, <laughs> or whenever you get them, you're gonna be like, "You're right." I'm telling we'll you, buy right a hat and a shirt, yeah. and then get the free knockdowns. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Don't that, just get no, free knockdowns. That knockdown is awesome. It is <laughs> awesome. I, I gave it to my trainee, and I, I didn't have any in my pocket. And I said, "Hey, you got those knockdowns in your pocket?" And he had one. Of them. Oh, I actually like this. Yeah, <laughs> it stays. Like this. It stays in my pocket now, yeah, maybe right it's just next something to the about VIP. A fresh plastic knockdown, but you know, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you get it from PDRPride.com, guys. If you're interested in those knockdowns, I think they're on. Uh, free for there. Yeah, they're free. I think they're on back order, but I'm a. I'm a. Uh, I do have a pack of them over there, so. Uh, I'll go ahead and release like well, for, three more. You know, so. To answer his question, you know, what kind of tap downs on rails? Um, to me, it depends on the car. It depends. I'm reading how that metal's, you know, when I hit it with one tap down, you know, one tap down, yeah. I'm going to see how that moves. Um, right. Because some of these metals react differently and will react better Subaru. with the right knockdown. Um, Subaru. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. you know, uh, sometimes, I, like I said, the VIP is always in my pocket. Um, it's kind of my go-to. So if that, but if that VIP isn't working the way it should, like I know it should, I'm going to switch to plastic. Let me see if plastic works better, you know, and sometimes it, it, that will work better over a metal. So I'm kind of, I'll go back and forth and see yeah. how that, you know, that rail's reacting. I had a, it's funny, James Brown, James Brown said that knockdown laid that aluminum hood high down quick Saturday. So I had a brand new GT 500 Mustang guy just bought it, brings it home, washes it for the first time. And in the hood scoop on the side had this terrible, like it almost was like his pinky finger was poking through it. And it was nasty. And I'm like, you know, okay. So I, we opened up the hood and one of the guys at the shop said, it's from the hood prop rod. So the hood prop rod, there's an opening for the, for the hood scoop fit perfectly in there. And it was like, they didn't want the hood to sit all the way open. So they put the hood prop rod in there and that's what caused the high. I used Chris's knockdown. It took me like two and a half seconds. And I was like, I can't even, I, I had to let the car sit there because I couldn't even walk in there and be like, hey, <laughs> this terrible looking high spot in your car took me two and a half seconds with, with the PDR Pride knockdown. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, when we get off the show, I'm going to release. I think they're on back order. But uh, like I said, Chris, I just got Chris going to cuss me out when we get off the car. It's all good. <laughs> but, but, you got to uh, buy a shirt. You got to buy a shirt. <laughs> Yeah, that's the whole thing, man. Buy the shirts, man. You know, that's the piece of thought. Uh, just so you guys know, if you guys are coming to MTE, we're going to have a sh whole show about MTE and why you should come. But uh, definitely go ahead. Um, book your tickets. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead and book your tickets. And we are going to have a dinner. A, uh, a dinner. So um, on that show, think about the times that you guys are going to come in because we want to. Everybody uh, at, at the dinner, so and, uh, probably Saturday. Yeah, probably there. Saturday night because most of the people will be there. Yeah, maybe, maybe Friday because you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll yeah, probably have we'll, a six o'clock plane ride. You what, know? what we'll, you know we'll know probably me? do is have like a. Uh, you have probably to send us taxes done before. <laughs> send, <laughs> send, an, right. send an email in and you know let us know that hey you're interested in the dinner. Just so we can kind of get yeah. a head count. Um, but yeah, it'll be a good time. It'll be like a little meet and greet. We did one in Baltimore. A couple guys came down and that was and, fun. And hung. It was fun. Yeah. Just a bunch of dorky dead guys, man. That's all. <laughs> yeah. pretty much. So back so so back on the topic. We got, you know, the some of the techniques. What else do we need to go over? Time. Access, you know, access, breaking it down. You know, these these dents can be puzzle pieces, and it's literally just putting together a puzzle. Um, and I think I think to glass a dent, you really just have to mess up a lot, you know, <laughs> and, and within these mess ups, though, you're really striving to glass it every single time, mm -hmm. you know, so if you're not hitting it and you fall a little bit short, like it's okay, but just you're the, the constant of, 
uh, keep trying to glass it, you know, and, and mm-hmm. taking these points into consideration, always in the back of your head when you're, you know, moving that light back tool selection. Am I looking at from 360? All these things are going through your head or need to go through your head as you're trying to glass a dent. I think help heat, like you said before, heat helps too. Even on hot days, like some of those really nasty, big, nasty, almost stretch dents, the heat yeah. helps. Yeah. You know, if, if you don't have the, if you don't have the heat or, or you, you're going to get in there and go pick up a rock shit. lot, you know, go pick up yeah. a rock lot and try to glass dents, you know, <laughs> like just go to Olay Motors down the street. And you know, you're going to make hey. mistakes. You know, say, hey, here, I'm looking to, mm-hmm. you know, fix your cars. And if you land the account for whatever price it may be, just practice, to, you know, trying to glass and taking all these points into consideration when you're doing it. Um, you know, practice literally is only going to make perfect, especially with this craft. You know, in a perfect, perfect example, you were in town, Dave, when I did that up Porsche Macan. And it was a nasty dent. We're working the dent. You know, I've got that was a three sixty, couple three sixty on that car. Couple couple years behind me, and I made a mistake. The panel was hot. Oh, I hit it with a metal knockdown. Yeah, mm. took the paint, knocked the paint off. You know, so the don't. PDR yeah. knockdowns that have come in yet. You know, don't uh, <laughs> don't mm-hmm. <laughs> don't stress it. You know what I mean? You're gonna make mistakes. We all still make mistakes. But now you know, you know for yeah. the next time. Like, hey, no, I'm using plastic. Um, yeah, the, the wood tip. Nick so, uses a wood tip uh, and use constant pressure when repairing something deep. Mm, okay. Some caveman stuff over there. Yeah. Caveman. Yeah. Caveman. <laughs> the, the, the uh so he's asking why why does heat help you? Um if the panel's warm. You know already. what? Sometimes it, it 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 makes that metal push easier. The whole I, panel I, may be hot. But that little deep spot may not be. Yeah. You know, the way it's folded over, that sun's reflecting the whole panel. Yeah, it's hot. But is that specific point of impact yep. where you're about to push? Is that part warm mm-hmm. enough? You know, to and, make and, that and you can feel, feel it when you're pushing. You can feel when that spot. Yeah, because it's hot on my arm as I'm pushing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You can really feel that dent kind of. That umbrella has you know, cooled it down yet. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think also um, that when you try to get the last 5% out of those dents, you're probably going to spend, you know, uh, 45 minutes, an hour, I think. Uh, so it's that know, last I, 10% that counts. Yeah. So, so you may get through all of this stuff and then, you know, you got to spend, you know, two hours to get it up to about 90% and then another two and a half, you know, two hours, hour and a half to get it that, that extra 10%. So you're not going to blaze through the repair. So also when you're looking at the time, you know, know that the cleanup time. So when you're, when you're, when you're expecting the damage and kind of looking at it, you know, from the beginning, you can see the areas that's going to, that you're going to need to clean up just because of leverage and what you got to do, the tools. And sometimes you don't get an option to use the tool that's going to keep it clean. No. Or use glue stuff. So you have to go in there with a sharp tip tool and very fine, you know, pushes. And you just hit one that super sharp dead on that rear door, Chris. That thing was terrible. Oh, it was it was nasty. <laughs> it was nasty. But uh, you know, you what I was focusing on is the metallic to lay right because yeah. that's a whole nother. I can get the dent to lay out, lay right as long as I got the leverage and all of those factors. The model, but now trying to yeah, now trying to get that metallic flake to look right. I mean, it's flat to the touch, but when you look dead on it, it looks like crap, you know. So, um, but yeah, there's a there's a there's a technique behind you know uh, dents that you can only use a sharp tool. Imagine pushing the dent. A seven inch dent with only a sharp tool. I mean, we've all done it, but the cleanup time is a lot longer uh, for those uh, uh, when we can, when we only can use those sharp tip tools. Uh, that you know that I call it cleanup time. You're gonna spend just as much time to clean up as it is to get the dent to that ninety percent. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I tell my guys to take a break, get ready to start that cleanup time, and focus on that repair. 
Uh, and don't get tunnel vision. My guy, I call it tunnel vision. Yes. Uh, we, we, we have a, on hell cars, we have a different person expect the hail cars than working on it before they can sign off. So after, as a guy works on the car, he finishes it. He has to have another technician sign off on it. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it is what it is. It, 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 hey, I got to create that, that, uh, oh, of course, that consistency. So, uh, another day, uh, another one of our techs has to sign off on it and he's held accountable if obviously anything's missed uh, as well as the technician. Uh, it messes up our day, but normally another technician is working there at the same time too. But, um, so but yeah, like, so that's what we do. It looks like our buddy Boz, he bought a hail damage uh, van with a lot of dents and creases all over the body. He says, I'm ready to be a PDR technician as soon as I get my van cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> Boz came to our workshop. He's from Atlanta. Cool dude. Truly yeah, passionate. Man. Just just putting it out there, you know? I mean, just it's just putting it's, in work. <laughs> yeah. It's really nice yeah. to see guys that are just like, you know what? I'm gonna do this, figure it out. Um, you know, so good luck, Boz. You know, hey, <laughs> bring it up to Baltimore, we'll help you out. Uh and, and it looks like uh we got another question. It says there's a big difference between aluminum and metal with heat. Yes. Yes. Yeah, anything yeah. anything with aluminum I, I heat almost all of them now you know yeah. so those f-150s that, that's my nemesis man i'll fix a bentley i'll fix any of that stuff those f-150s are terrible to work on yeah yeah aluminum sucks so let's you know anything else that we're missing on how to keep your dent repairs clean anything else natural light i, I see uh the dead zones is talking about natural light. Yes, use natural light. Use some reflections, some natural reflections mm -hmm. in your environment. Always constantly pan. I had one guy, he was looking, he was like, I don't see it. I said, move your head. <laughs> so you got to constantly be moving your neck and panning and seeing the reflection, seeing if the orange pill lay right, uh, all of that stuff. So um, uh, don't get stuck in the kind of, I don't know. I don't know what they call it, but. <laughs> After training some guy, man, these guys, they come up with his own thing. You know, I think I had a buddy, he he sits on the bucket. So he only looks at the dent one angle and he's on his bucket. <laughs> so, going, you know, vertical, I mean, horizontal, it is, uh, it is, it is line city out that thing. Yeah. But I had so Shane, stand I had, up. <laughs> I had Shane pushing the day and, you know, he's in there and he's, he's like, I just can't find it. Ooh. You get to that to point when you're like, Pull the tool out, put it back in, yeah. start yeah. over. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and there's some that's that we do that you still you have trouble finding that tip. You know what I mean? I did today. It was a rear door You're on like, my Jeep. Where <laughs> am I? Where where is this tip? You know, rear door on the Jeep Wrangler. You the day, you're like, all right, I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go <throw> there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Sometimes you're guessing. I mean, I've repaired dents, and I'm like, I know I'm here. Let me just push a little harder. And then all of a sudden, you see it. Yeah. You get that little yeah. tiny little. That's good. That's He's good. right. Though. He's right. And then it's like yeah, those so ratchet handles come into play, and then you just turn <laughs> them, and then you're cranking on it. <laughs> yeah, he works for a Ford dealership. Oh, I feel for you, man. I feel Dane for says you, he likes the jackhammer for blending. I, I love my jackhammer. It, gets used every day the jackhammer is is same jack yeah, yeah. Okay. i got i got okay. the big one i got the small one um, okay i've never used I, it I, yeah i have I, I use them you know yeah he was the first to introduce the bling blending uh yeah. concept to the to, to yeah. the main one i'm pretty sure hell guys are doing it left and right but uh, i remember he was the first one to have a blending hammer you if know, i remember yeah. you know a tech at least coming out with a blending hammer and um yeah, yeah when they came out i bought the set the the small yeah, one and the big one they still get used to this yeah. day you know uh no issues with them no complaints they they work you know they're to me they're a great hammer yeah yeah so yeah so uh i'm pretty sure you guys can rewind and recap all that knowledge we try to share with you guys um and looks like we're at 10 o'clock so it's time to thank everyone. They, they, we have some loyal, uh, you know, followers of these yeah. of these live uh, shows. So you know, there's some familiar, you know, people in this chat. 
Um, so I definitely want to thank you guys for watching. Definitely. Um, and, and keeping us motivated. Keep, to keep connecting. PDR yeah. Workshop Facebook. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. On Facebook, PDR Workshop. And we got a lot of guys in there asking questions. So. Hit that hit that thumbs up. You know, it all it definitely helps us out. Yeah, definitely, guys. Um, yeah, hit the thumbs up before we go. Uh, Dave Ryan, you wanna kind of exit plug? Dave, Windy City Dent Repair, YouTube, <laughs> Instagram, Facebook. Same stuff. RPS Dent Repair, Baltimore. <laughs> On all that, MySpace. MySpace. Jump off. Whatever. <laughs> so you're breaking up. Yep, Dennis Touch, guys, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. And again, I want to thank everybody for joining us in this live show. We were getting up to about 32 to 40, uh, 32 people watching. So again, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button on your way out. And thank you, thank you so much for uh, watching the show and supporting us, guys. Peace out. See y'all later. See you guys. Thanks, guys. I just got to find my mic, my mouth. <laughs>